This video shows how to use some indifference identities. We're going to introduce these basic identities. If we go back to our summary of trig identities, you'll notice that I've added two sections. I've added the cofunction identities, which we talked about in the first part of this class, and I've also left blank an area for some indifference identities, and we're going to go over what those identities are. Let's start off with the sum identity for sine. If I have sine of alpha plus beta, this is equal to sine of alpha times cosine of beta plus cosine of alpha times sine of beta. Let's see how this would work. Say I ask you to find the sine of 105 degrees exactly. Remember, exactly means don't reach for your calculator. You're going to have to use your special angles you have memorized, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. The trouble is 105 doesn't look like one of our special angles, and it doesn't even look like those angles rotated into the different quadrants. Instead, we can represent 105 degrees as the sum of 45 degrees and 60 degrees. We know what the sine and cosine of 45 degrees and 60 degrees are, so if we use our sum identity for sine, we'll find that the sine of 105 degrees is equal to the sine of the quantity 45 degrees plus 60 degrees. So the trick to solving a question like this is being able to recognize 105 degrees as the sum of two of our known angles, like 45 degrees and 60 degrees. If I use my sum identity, then I say that the sine of 45 degrees plus 60 degrees is equal to the sine of 45 degrees times the cosine of 60 degrees plus the cosine of 45 degrees times the sine of 60 degrees. I know what the sine of 45 degrees is, that's the square root of 2 over 2. Likewise, cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. Cosine of 45 degrees is also square root of 2 over 2, and sine of 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. We know this from our unit circle and from the material we did in the first part of this class. If I go ahead and do the multiplication, I get square root of 2 over 4 plus square root of 2 times the square root of 3, all over 4, and if I multiply that square root of 2 and square root of 3, I end up with square root of 6. My last step would be to combine these two fractions with addition, and my final answer for the sine of 105 degrees exactly is square root of 2 plus square root of 6, all over 4. How can I check this is correct? Well, to check this, I can use my calculator. We'll use our calculator by first entering in sine of 105 degrees, seeing what that equals, and then try typing in square root of 2 plus square root of 6 all over 4, and see if they equal the same number. So let's pull up our calculator. First of all, to find the sine of 105, I'll type in sine 105, but then I'll stop. I'll check my mode. Oops, I'm in radian mode. I need to be in degree mode since I'm talking about 105 degrees. And then go ahead and hit enter. And I get this number. Now if I try doing square root of 2 plus the square root of 6, now I'm going to close my parentheses because I want that whole quantity over the number 4 and we see that we are in fact correct. So when the problem asks for you to find sine of 105 degrees exactly, you can't use your calculator to find the answer, but you can and should use your calculator to check your answer. All right, now that we found the sum identity for sine, let's look at it for cosine. If I had cosine of alpha plus beta, that's equal to cosine alpha times cosine beta, minus sine alpha sine beta. When I had sine of alpha plus beta, I ended up adding my two terms. In this case, if I'm adding alpha plus beta and finding its cosine, I'll be subtracting cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. That's an important difference. All right, let's look at the same problem, but now we want to find cosine of 105 degrees exactly. Again, cosine of 105 degrees is going to be equal to cosine of 45 degrees plus cosine of 60 degrees. If we use this formula, 
then we'll find that cosine of 45 degrees plus 60 degrees is equal to cosine of 45 degrees cosine of 60 degrees minus sine of 45 degrees sine of 60 degrees. Again, if we plug in our values that we know for cosine of 45 degrees, cosine of 60 degrees, and sine of 45 degrees and sine of 60 degrees, then we end up with the final answer of cosine of 105 degrees equals square root of 2 minus square root of 6 over 4. All right, last one, tangent. What happens when we add two angles and put it into our tangent function? Well, the tangent of alpha plus beta is equal to, oh, this looks a lot more complex, tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta all over 1 minus tangent alpha times tangent beta. So this one has a fraction, and the two terms in the numerator are added, and the terms in the denominator are subtracted. Again, this is for tangent alpha plus beta. If we wanted to find tangent of 105 degrees exactly, We'd go ahead and again recognize that tangent of 105 degrees is tangent 45 plus 60 degrees. And if we plug this into our tangent sum identity, and we recall that tangent of 45 is 1, and tangent of 60 degrees is square root of 3, then we get 1 plus square root of 3 over the quantity 1 minus 1 times square root of 3, or simply 1 plus square root of 3, over 1 minus square root of 3. And let's go ahead and check this answer. Again, let's try tangent of 105 degrees. Let's check our mode. We're still in degree mode. All right, that's equal to negative 3.73205. Now if I say the quantity 1 plus square root of 3, close parentheses for the square root, close parentheses for my numerator, divided by the quantity 1 minus square root of 3, hopefully we'll get the same answer, and we do. So again, this is a good way to check your answer when you're using the sum identities. So now we can go ahead and fill in at least our sum identities. I have my sine alpha plus beta, my cosine of alpha plus beta, and my tangent of alpha plus beta. Well now what happens if instead of the sum identities we want to talk about the difference identities? So for instance, sine of alpha minus beta, well that ends up being exactly the same thing that we had for sine of alpha plus beta, except those two terms are now separated by a subtraction sign. Cosine of alpha minus beta is again equal to the same thing that we had with the alpha plus beta, but now instead of subtracting cosine alpha cosine beta and sine alpha sine beta, now we are adding those two separate terms. And likewise, tangent of alpha minus beta, now we have tangent of alpha minus tangent beta all over the quantity 1 plus tangent alpha tangent beta. Let's do one example of this. Find cosine of 15 degrees exactly. Again, we need to be able to recognize that 15 degrees is equal to cosine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. Keep in mind, if instead of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees, if you tried to use 60 degrees minus 45 degrees, you'd get the exact same answer. So 45 degrees minus 30 degrees is not the only path to solving this problem. As long as your two angles have a difference of 15 degrees, you'll get the correct answer. So if we go ahead and use our formula, we'll have cosine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees equaling cosine of 45 degrees, cosine of 30 degrees, plus sine of 45 degrees, sine of 30 degrees. Again, we'll plug in cosine of 45 degrees, cosine of 30 degrees, and sine of 45 degrees and sine of 30 degrees. We end up with square root of 6 over 4 plus square root of 2 over 4 or cosine of 15 degrees is equal to square root of 6 plus square root of 2 all over 4. And here we have the summary of all our trig identities now. We have our reciprocal identities, our even and odd identities, our cofunction identities, our ratio identities, our Pythagorean identities, and lastly, our sum and different identities. Some of these identities I will be giving you on your exam. I'll be sending out an email with your formula sheet so you can know what to expect to have to memorize and what you don't have to memorize for your exams. 
And there we have an introduction to using the sum in difference identities.